well, it could be. If, if we find out they exist, uh, then it's because of their communication to us. But they're going to be a long ways away. Space is enormous, even the closest star. Buzz Aldrin, renowned for his stellar resilience in space and on the moon, has just dropped a bombshell. Aliens are on their way to Earth. This revelation goes beyond the immediate shock, tapping into Aldrin's first-hand experiences from the Apollo 11 missions and the untold stories he has kept under wraps until now. If true, what could Buzz Aldrin's revelation about incoming aliens mean for the fate of Earth? Most importantly, how will humanity respond to this imminent threat? Join us in unraveling the tears, the words, and the staggering revelations behind the untold story. Brace yourself for an extraterrestrial saga as Buzz Aldrin breaks into tears, saying the aliens are coming to Earth. On July 16, 1969, the world witnessed the historic launch of Apollo 11 from Kennedy Space Center, marking humanity's first mission to the moon. Buzz Aldrin was a key astronaut on the mission, and his expertise and presence were vital for the launch and the mission. During the critical phase of the lunar module's descent to the moon on July 20th, Aldrin played a pivotal role alongside Neil Armstrong. As they transitioned from the command module to the lunar module named Eagle, Aldrin's expertise became instrumental in guiding the craft toward the lunar surface. His contributions were significant in ensuring the success of this historic mission. Aldrin embodies the spirit of adventure, courage, and extraordinary human achievements. When recalling the Apollo 11 mission, vivid images of this monumental journey and Aldrin's indelible role naturally come to mind. As a lunar explorer, he personified humanity's unwavering quest to surpass the boundaries of our world. Aldrin seamlessly fused intellectual brilliance and military precision, profoundly impacting the Apollo 11 ambition. Aldrin, a bedrock of knowledge and skill, was NASA's undisputed source whenever they needed expertise. His journey extended beyond the confines of academia, marked by his courage as a fighter pilot in daring combat missions during the Korean War. Within the Apollo 11 command module, Aldrin assumed the crucial role of lunar module pilot. While the designation may sound limited, its significance is immeasurable. He guided the endeavor, enabling humans to set foot on the moon for the first time. Aldrin's brilliance and the impact of his role were evident in his duty to oversee the intricate systems of the lunar module, appropriately named Eagle. His responsibilities included coordinating the module's descent onto the moon's surface and managing its ascent to rendezvous with the command module. Every switch, indicator light, and stream of data fell under his watchful gaze, showcasing the depth of his expertise and commitment to the historic mission. His role was the foundation, the crucial connection, between the mission's success and the looming shade of disaster. That moment, which still holds our collective breath even years later, arrived. The descent to the moon unfolded as the eagle gracefully separated from the command module. Under Aldrin's guidance, Armstrong adeptly maneuvered the spacecraft, achieving a precise and successful landing at the Sea of Tranquility. Aldrin's composed and decisive actions in this crucial phase stood as one of the primary factors enabling their historic landing on the moon. Following Neil Armstrong's iconic proclamation of one small step, Buzz Aldrin was next in line. With deliberate steps, he followed Armstrong, etching his presence in history as the second human to grace the lunar expanse. As Aldrin descended the ladder and finally made contact with the moon's surface, he was in awe of the sight before him. His poetic soul painted the scene as a magnificent desolation, a contradictory harmony of beauty and emptiness. In those moments, Aldrin's words carried the weight of his journey and the profound transformation of a once unreachable realm into a reality beneath his feet. The lunar landscape, an alien canvas untouched by human footsteps until now, held a metaphysical allure that captured his imagination. 
Amid this otherworldly sensation, the moon remained stark and barren, lacking Earth's familiar life and colors. Once a mere explorer, Aldrin became a lunar scientist. Orchestrating experiments, he left his mark on the moon's powdery surface. Also, the American flag was staked into the lunar soil, a symbol of achievement and unity fluttering against the blackness of space. However, amidst the scientific challenges, Aldrin found a moment of reflection. Pausing, he connected with something larger than himself in the vast stillness of the lunar environment, engaging in a symbolic act of communion. This gesture transcended religion, a spiritual whisper between man and the universe. It is crucial to recall that Buzz Aldrin was not just a scientist, but also a humanist. On the moon, he seamlessly merged these roles, intertwining the threads of technical exploration with the deep resonance of the human experience. In those singular moments, Aldrin's legacy transcended his technical achievements. It encapsulated the intricate interplay between humanity's thirst for knowledge and its eternal yearning to touch the sublime. Aldrin's encounters with the moon surpassed mere walking and working. They were interactions that unveiled the moon's unique character. With a spirited sense of childlike excitement, he revealed the moon's altered gravity by hopping and skipping across its surface. These buoyant movements were both a demonstration and a celebration of the lunar environment itself, captivating a global audience of millions back on Earth. His movements, a dance of moonlit joy, were captured in vivid detail. This included the now famous image of his boots imprint etched into the moon's soil, proof of the subtle effects of pressure in this distant land. Nevertheless, it wasn't solely the lighthearted moments that etched Aldrin's name into history. He became part of an immortal scene, an image that spoke of human achievement and national pride. In a photograph framed by the limitless expanse of space, Aldrin stood beside the American flag, saluting with unwavering determination. The shade of his helmet mirrored his reflection alongside the image of Armstrong, who also took that giant first step onto the moon's surface. His legacy was not only cemented through images, but also through words. On a momentous phone call, the voice of President Richard Nixon rang out across the emptiness of space, congratulating Aldrin and Armstrong on their triumphant feat. Nixon acclaimed them as the two most renowned figures in history, lauding their lunar mission as a monumental leap for humanity. As the moon's enchantment faded, Aldrin re-entered the lunar module after Armstrong, still fueled by a sense of adventure. With a deliberate flick of a switch, an electric current surged forth, igniting the ascent engine. A burst of power lifted the astronauts from the moon's peaceful surface and propelled them back toward the stars. The lunar module, a vessel of dreams, eventually met with the orbiting embrace of the command module Columbia, skillfully piloted by Michael Collins. This reunion symbolized unity amidst the cosmic expanse. Buzz Aldrin's contributions to the Apollo 11 mission surpassed mere technical prowess. They were monumental and infused with a distinctive spirit. Amidst the wonders of space, Aldrin faced an unexpected challenge, space sickness. This marked the first instance of a human succumbing to this ailment beyond Earth's bounds. As the Apollo 11 spacecraft journeyed toward the moon, Aldrin grappled with a peculiar sensation, the disorienting conflict between his inner ear and his eyes. This battle of perceptions, stemming from weightlessness, resulted in a condition known as space sickness. Like motion sickness but more mysterious, it arose from the body's struggle to comprehend its orientation and movement in a gravity-defying domain. The unwelcome visitor brought waves of nausea, unrelenting dizziness, a persistent headache, and weariness. Even Aldrin's appetite seemed to vanish amidst the cosmic tumult. Remarkably, the whispers of Aldrin's struggle remained a secret, suppressed under NASA's emphasis on the positive aspects of the mission, shielding it from any adverse spotlight. However, with time, the obscured chapters of Aldrin's journey emerged. 
interviews and documentaries became Buzz Aldrin's chosen medium to narrate his story beyond its triumphant veneer. In sharing his experiences openly, Aldrin had dual intentions. First, to act as a guide for future spacefarers, arming them with the knowledge to prevent this global enemy. Second, to portray himself as an example of humanity's shared vulnerabilities. His revelations were proof of his unwavering spirit, echoing that we remain tied to our human nature even among the stars. In a domain that often projects an aura of invincibility, Aldrin's honesty reminded us that weakness is the cornerstone of our shared human narrative. In his autobiography, he revealed the clandestine battle with space sickness, shedding light on the vulnerability experienced by a seasoned astronaut. For two days, Buzz Aldrin faced health issues that raised concerns about his ability to perform well on a crucial mission. This worried those involved and shook the public perception of Aldrin as an astronaut and a dignitary. His journey went beyond a simple mission, turning into a global success story of overcoming physical challenges. The world eagerly watched, curious about every move of the celestial heroes. However, Buzz Aldrin was no ordinary spacefarer. The sustenance of water and crackers became his allies, aimed at soothing the celestial storm within. Although his stomach held steadfast, waves of nausea and discomfort rumbled through his body. With determination rivaling a comet's trajectory, he combated this sickness by ingesting a mixture of medication. Aldrin also shared an intriguing observation from the Apollo 11 mission while journeying to the moon. In July 1969, the world's attention was captivated by the audacious endeavors of Apollo 11. Armstrong, Collins, and Aldrin were enclosed in the capsule, a trio embodying humanity's bold ambition to touch the lunar surface for the first time. As the expansive realm of space unfolded before them, Aldrin's gaze fell upon a bright object within the sheath of their command module. This sighting would ignite minds with fiery debate, sow the seeds of innumerable theories, and kindle the eternal flames of cosmic curiosity. This unexpected sight caught the astronauts off guard, prompting reflection on the unpredictability of being among the first humans in outer space. Yet, these were no ordinary individuals. They were trained astronauts. In the spirit of scientific inquiry, they set out to understand the nature of the light. The crew delved into various possible explanations for the phenomenon. To Aldrin, the light that sparked his curiosity could be an unidentified flying object, or UFO. Another hypothesis centers around the light emerging from parts of their spacecraft, specifically components that separated during particular maneuvers. As the lunar lander was extracted from the rocket, various panels or sections detached from the spacecraft to ensure a safe extraction process. These panels might have remained near the main spacecraft or moved alongside it at certain points in the mission due to their trajectory and proximity. Aldrin postulated that the observed light could have been sunlight reflecting off one of these panels that had separated from their craft. Since these panels were near the spacecraft and moving away from it, the reflection of sunlight off one of these surfaces might have created the observed light. Adding more complexity to the story, the courageous Apollo 11 explorers hesitated before sharing their intriguing discovery with those back on Earth. Instead, they initially took a subtle approach by discreetly asking about the location of the panels they had previously discarded. They aimed to determine if the drifting object Aldrin observed could be linked to this discarded part. However, the response quickly dispelled this idea revealing that the panel was far away, 6,000 miles from them. As such, Aldrin and his colleagues remained unsure about what they had seen, sharing all this information after their return many years later. In an interview with a foreign television network, Aldrin disclosed these observations, assuming the information had already been made public. However, this marked the first time the world heard about Aldrin witnessing a UFO in space. The news quickly spread, 
with rumors about aliens on the moon and coming to Earth. Eventually, the situation became more complex. Buzz also acknowledged the high likelihood of life existing beyond Earth, primarily due to the vast number of galaxies and stars in the universe. With billions of galaxies and an incredible number of stars within each, the statistical probability suggests that conditions for life, as we understand it, might exist elsewhere. Simultaneously, Aldrin exercised caution in interpreting the observations made during the Apollo 11 mission. The sighting of an unidentified light or object was unusual, and while he didn't deny it, he also didn't deem it extraordinary or definitive proof of extraterrestrial life. While the possibility of life beyond Earth is plausible given the size of the cosmos, this isolated observation wasn't sufficient to conclusively confirm the existence of alien life. Aldrin referenced Carl Sagan's principle, saying extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. This hints at the need for a more comprehensive understanding. In addition, Buzz has reiterated for a few years that his words about the light and the UFO were taken out of context. He clarified that he used the term UFO because, in his mind, the light was unidentified. Upon returning to Earth and analyzing the possibilities of what it could have been, he moved on. But news outlets and UFO enthusiasts did not. This shows how UFO news reporting works, where stories are often presented in a sensational manner. Time and again, we've heard stories from different people who firmly believe in UFO sightings. However, when the story is declared fake and dismissed by an official source, it often vanishes from public attention. In such cases, an authoritative figure asserts that the story was either entirely fabricated or misinterpreted, as in instances like this. Over the years, numerous theories and speculative ideas have surfaced, suggesting the presence of aliens or extraterrestrial artifacts on the moon. Some of these theories hold merit, contributing to a broader conversation, such as reports of intercepting or observing unusual radio signals or transmissions from the moon. They fuel speculation about potential alien communications or technology on the lunar surface. The far side of the moon, which remains unobservable from Earth due to tidal locking, has prompted conjecture about hidden alien bases or structures. This region's lack of direct observation has led to imaginative theories about secret activities or installations on the lunar far side. The challenge lies in discerning the reality of a place we cannot directly observe. Some individuals even propose artificial structures or anomalies seen in lunar photographs, suggesting the presence of buildings, towers, or constructed objects on the lunar surface. The leading theory asserts the existence of alien settlements on the moon, prompting the construction of their infrastructure to survive. While these structures may appear as rocks and shadows from Earth, their true nature remains uncertain. Meanwhile, Aldrin suggested that odd formations on the far side of the moon might not be coincidental. Aldrin noticed various objects on the moon that seemed out of place. The objects resembled satellite dishes with distinct features, including a crater shape and a long spike in the middle. He even described a picture on the moon that could be interpreted as a bridge or a pipe resembling an inching worm. Aldrin believed that extraterrestrials might have established structures on the far side of the moon. His claims elicited fear and astonishment from space defense officials. The idea also raised concerns among governments and military agencies about the origin and intentions behind these alleged structures. A specific object was mentioned, likened to a cooling tower from a nuclear power plant. Aldrin suggested that any species capable of interstellar travel and establishing a base on the moon could easily overpower us. He believes the species could indicate hidden depths, an obscured outpost, a relic from a forgotten civilization, or even something extraterrestrial. The far side of the moon, which is always hidden from Earth, presents an enigmatic space with limitless possibilities. Aldrin's idea sparks imagination and curiosity 
turning people into lunar detectives searching for signs of engineered constructs. While some discoveries may be tricks of the mind, Aldrin's endorsement gives credibility to these ideas. Beyond speculation, Aldrin passionately advocates for renewed lunar exploration, particularly focusing on the far side of the moon. His purpose extends beyond merely satisfying curiosity. He strives to unlock knowledge that has the potential to reshape our understanding of the universe. Aldrin's idea transcends the mere uncovering of ancient secrets or the existence of extraterrestrial installations. It is about unearthing wisdom that could revolutionize our technology, reveal forgotten histories, and provide a new perspective on our cosmic existence. If concealed structures exist on the moon, they present an irresistible challenge. Who constructed them, and how many years have they silently witnessed the passing of time? These questions act as golden keys that might unlock the doors of modern exploration, a quest pulsating with excitement and thrill. Aldrin's call for investigation and exploration goes beyond mere words. It is a battle cry for curiosity, adventure, and the unquenchable thirst for knowledge. It serves as a rallying call for those who steadfastly reject the notion that we have already uncovered every secret our universe holds. It is a flicker that ignites the flames of imagination within scientists, daring explorers, and visionary dreamers. It serves as a reminder that the canvas of our understanding is still incomplete, with countless stars left to chart in the vast expanse of our universe. Aldrin invites us to contemplate the mind-boggling expanse of countless galaxies, each hosting billions of stars and potential planets. He questions how we, in our tiny corner of the Milky Way, can assume solitude in the cosmos. Aldrin's audacity, demonstrated when he and Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, gives weight to his convictions. If humans have explored the moon, why wouldn't other entities explore their moons and stars? Aldrin's words weave a vivid tale, a passionate ode to the mysteries of space. His passion for cosmic discovery is evident as he delves into the alien, the otherworldly, and the cosmic unknown. His unwavering belief echoes through space and time, challenging the notion that life is confined to Earth. As our scientists and stargazers push the boundaries of our understanding, new worlds are unveiled at a breathtaking pace. Many of these planets exist in the Goldilocks zone, where conditions might support life. Aldrin's assertions present a challenge, urging humanity to continue the cosmic journey. His belief in extraterrestrial life is not just an idea, but a call for perpetual exploration envisioning a future where traveling between stars becomes a tangible reality, extending beyond the realms of science fiction. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.